Hello, I'm Stephen Fraser, and welcome to the Living the Life broadcast. Today, I am teaching on experiencing God. You know, our God is a God who wants to manifest himself in our life. He wants us to experience him. You know, whenever we get in the word of God, or we go to church, or when we get into prayer, it ought to be an experience. It shouldn't just be something that we're doing at a religious obligation, but we should be doing it expecting to have a, an experience with God. And so watch the broadcast today. Be strengthened in your faith to be able to experience God in your life now. How many of you know God is fun? The Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Glory be to God. Man, oh man. Well, if it's like that in his presence, it should be like that in church. Right? Because, I mean, if you're going to experience the presence of God anywhere, it, sh- it ought to be in the house of God. It ought to be at church. It ought to be in the place where supposedly people are coming together to worship him, draw near to him, and get to know him. Amen. And so in his presence is fullness of joy. We can say fullness of fun. God's a good time. Amen. Amen. He's a good time. He's the originator of happy hour. That's right. The devil has come along, tried to mimic and imitate, you know, counterfeit, I really should say. He tries to counterfeit God. And, uh, you know, he comes up with all kinds of things. He's got his wine and spirits to, uh, you know, be a counterfeit to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the new wine of heaven, the good stuff. Amen, the good stuff. Glory to God. And so, thank God, we got the good stuff. No negative side effects. Aren't you glad? <laughs> There's no negative side effects to God. Woo, glory to God. And you know, in the world, folks smoke stuff. And that's a real, you know, one that's just kind of figuring that out. You know what? I mean, it's just so strange that a human being would envelop himself with smoke. But then, I got over in the Word of God, and I found out that the glory of God comes in a smoky cloud. And I thought, well, there's another counterfeit of the devil. Here, we're supposed to be in the smoke of God's glory, enveloped in the smoke of his glory. You can read about it over there in the Old Testament. He'd come down, and it'd be like smoke would just just fill the temple. And, I mean, people got so touched by that glory that a lot of times they couldn't even stand up. The Bible says the priests couldn't even stand to minister. They were overcome by that glory of God that was in that place. And so now the devil, he offers folks... Stuff to smoke that causes them not to be able to stand up. See, but it has all kinds of negative side effects to it. But thank God, the good stuff, the real stuff, the original stuff. Ooh, God's stuff. I mean, that's the stuff that has no negative side effects and just fills you up, just strengthens you, and just transforms your life from goodness to goodness, better to better, glory to glory. It just keeps getting better and better with him. Glory be to God. So next time you get in the word, don't just get in the word. Smoke it. (laughs) Drink it. Get tanked up on it. Get filled up on it. In other words, I'm simply saying experience it. Experience God, man. Glory to God. He's an experience. You get over there in the word of God, I mean, you should be expecting an experience. When you come to church, you you should be expecting an experience. And now, you know, I got to qualify that because, you know, the experience that I'm talking about isn't always some kind of outward experience. And again, that's all the world can offer you is some kind of outward experience, some kind of feeling, some kind of experience in the flesh. Well, thank God, God will manifest on your body. He'll overwhelm you physically. He will touch you physically. I mean, he's in the healing business. His power will flow through you, and it will affect a healing and a cure in your body if you're dealing with any kind of symptoms. So thank God, God does manifest in the form of healing. God does manifest, and he will intoxicate a person. I mean, he'll just absolutely overwhelm their five physical senses. Just cause them to be just overcome, just intoxicated with him. 
But God goes even deeper than that. We shouldn't just be looking for and even settling for an outward experience. We're looking to be touched deeply. We're looking for God who is a spirit to communicate with our spirit, to touch our spirit. We're going to have an experience with God on the inside. And then what's on the inside will work its way to the outside. But you see, we've got to get accustomed to living life out of our spirit. We've got to be in touch with the spirit, with our spirit, which is in touch with the Holy Spirit. We've got to be in touch with spiritual things. We've got to know when we're having a spiritual experience. A spiritual experience. We should be having spiritual experiences. I mean, regularly, all the time. A revelation from God is a spiritual experience. Where, I mean, you get a hold of a truth that it wasn't something that men taught you. It wasn't something you figured out with your mind. It wasn't just something that settled here back in your mind. And, you, oh, that was, yeah, that's very interesting. But it was something, I mean, you experienced on the inside of you. A transformation. A reality that's more real to you than anything in the physical. Something that goes beyond your ability to explain. How many people know God is so great that he goes beyond man's ability to explain? Amen. He cannot be defined fully by man. We can, you know, give a little bits and pieces. But, I mean, God is much greater than our intellect, than anything we can figure out with our mind. And so that's why we want to open our hearts to him. And we want to get out beyond the mind, and we want to have a spirit spiritual experience with God we want a spirit we want something that just goes beyond the five physical senses goes beyond the mind all the world has to offer is things to satisfy appease your five physical senses but man we're looking for something deeper than that I said, well, for something deeper than that. Yeah, I want my body in good shape. I want, I want to feel God in my body. I, I, you know, that's all great. But more than that, I want it when my body or when the things of this world, my five physical senses are communicating to me negative things, negative things, negative things. Thank God I can step over into some positive things. And I can be experiencing awesome things, awesome things, great things, mighty things in the midst of a lot of natural negative things that are going on. That's why we can go through life and when it looks like things are falling apart, things are falling apart in the natural, in the physical, we can just continue to laugh and rejoice and have a good time because in his presence. Hallelujah. And that's not just a physical thing. I mean, in the spirit. That's where he is. That's where he is. And he says over in the book of James, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Well, where do you draw near to God? Where he is. In the spirit. In the spirit. In the spirit. That's where he is. You know, because you could say God is everywhere, but he is in manifestation everywhere. But where is he all the time? He is in the spirit. That's where he is. He is in my spirit. If you've been born again, if the spirit of God lives on the inside of you, if Jesus is the Lord of your life, man, God is in your spirit. Draw near to him where he is in the spirit. And he will draw near to you. He will draw near to you. And you'll begin to have spiritual experiences that will spill over into the physical. That will affect change in the natural. So we're not looking to just change things in the natural. We're looking to have spiritual experiences with God. We're looking to commune with God, with our hearts, with our spirit. And that will change things in the natural. Hallelujah. But even while things are not changed in the natural, we're not uptight about it. We're really not even in a rush. You know, I don't believe Moses was in a great panic and in a rush to get in the promised land. Now, he wanted to get in there. We know that. He pleaded with God about it. You know, when God said, no, you're not entering in, you know, he went to God about it, and the Lord had to say to him, no, enough with that. Joshua's going to take the people in. He wanted to get in there. You know, he wanted to experience all those natural, all the naturally good things that that land had to offer. He wanted to experience that, but I can tell you right now, uh, those 40 years in the wilderness, he wasn't uptight. I said he wasn't, he wasn't anxious. He wasn't walking around that wilderness kicking stones around. I'm stuck out here in this wilderness. 
I've had enough of this wilderness. I tell you, I'm just sick and tired and just miserable in this wilderness. How many of you he didn't walk around the wilderness like that? And he's in a wilderness, which is really, the Bible calls it a wilderness, but literally it was a desert. I'm not sure why it says wilderness. It's, uh, well, because in the, in the Hebrew, it means a, a desolate place, a, a place of confusion and turmoil and things like that. It's just basically a, a, a mess of a place. From a natural standpoint, standpoint, he was in a mess of a place. And God had promised him this great promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, naturally speaking. But he wasn't uptight about getting in there. He was enjoying where he was on the way to where he was going. I said he was enjoying where he was on the way to where he was going. I like what it says in Proverbs 15, 15. It says, he who is of a merry heart, heart, spirit, he who has a merry spirit has a continual feast. Yeah, party. He who is of a merry heart has a continual party. Continual party. So you see, he was partying. We just keep coming back to that. He was partying. He was having a good time while in the wilderness. Are you having a good time where you are while claiming the promises of God concerning where he wants to take you? Oh, thank God for where he wants to take us. But oh, glory be to God for this spiritual place. I said this spiritual place because there is a place of abundance. There is a place of too much. There is a place of overflow in the spirit in God. Amen. In your spirit, there is overflow. There is an abundance of life. And a lot of times folks are out here look and say, man, we're going to have to get over into that abundant life. We've got to get into that abundant life. We've got to get, well, and a lot, and that's true, but a lot of times folks are thinking naturally. We've got to get over into that abundant life. And they're thinking, now, if I don't get that house, if I don't get that car, if I don't get this, or I don't get that thing, or this thing, or these things don't get straightened out, and if I don't see increase in these areas in the natural, see, we're not there yet. And so all they have limited themselves to is natural experiences. Living life out of the natural. Just having natural experiences. But God wants us to get over into spiritual experiences. Amen. Glory be to God. You know? And Jesus talks about over in John 7. He says, come to me and drink. He who thirsts, come to me and drink. So there's a drinking that you can do spiritually. Because of course he wasn't talking about natural drinking. He was talking about drinking of this living water. And it goes on to tell you what he's talking about. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Drinking of the Holy Spirit. Have you drunk of the Holy Spirit lately? Huh? <laughs> he said his word is food. Have you ever felt hungry? Huh? Have you ever eaten a good meal? And you go, oh that was good. That was good. You know, and then they come with dessert. And you go, oh, man, that's, that is good. Some good eating. You know, some people appreciate food more than other people. <laughs> and many times it shows. <laughs> but folks, you know, you know, they know a good meal, you know. And folks will pay money and they'll wait on line. For a good steak at a restaurant or some good seafood or something like that. You know, they'll, they'll pay extra money to be able to go to a nice restaurant and, and eat a nice meal. I mean, it's an experience. Dining out, dining out is to be an experience. Right? I'm not talking about McDonald's. But there are some places, you know, people go there to experience it. They don't just go there because they're hungry. You know, if you're just hungry, I mean, you can shove anything in your mouth. But a lot of times, see, folks will pay extra money. They'll go to a fancy place. They'll make it the night to go to experience eating. Well, see, spiritually, it's the same way. He said that his word is food. His spirit is drink. And he tells us, come, eat, experience, enjoy it. 
Fill yourself up. Stop going to God. Stop getting in the word because you're in a desperate situation. Because you're in desperate need for something. And start getting yourself dressed up and fixed up and ready for prayer. Get yourself stirred up about getting in there and experiencing God. Because he has prepared a spiritual table before you in the presence of your enemies. Friend, you ain't going to have any enemies in heaven. He's talking about the here and now. There is a table spread for you right now in the here and now. And he wants you to come. And he wants you to eat. And he wants it to be an experience. He doesn't want you praying because you have to pray. You know, you sit there, you, you've exhausted all your resources. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then, and then somebody says, maybe we ought to pray. And you think, has it come to that? <laughs> and it's always this desperate condition. When we're, when we're praying, or we're getting in the Word because we have to. We, we have to. It's our religious obligation. It's just something we have to do. Friend, we got to get over and start experiencing God. Experiencing Him. Uh, he is, when, he, when we feed on His truth, it's to be a dining experience. Now, I'm not much for shopping. But there are some women, there's a lady in my life, that likes shopping. I don't see the thrill of it. And, uh, but you know, they like, they like, they like looking around for sales and, and they like looking at stuff. Even if they aren't going to buy it. They just like to go shopping. They just like looking at it, and messing around with it. And of course, there's folks that are like men that are like that with fishing. I never understand. See, if I'm going to go fishing, it's to catch something to eat. I have like a caveman mentality when it comes to these things. It's like I'm going to hook the thing and I want it big enough and meaty enough so I can eat it. But then there's folks, they don't care. They just, they just oh, look, we caught another one. And they throw it back in the water. Yeah, I just don't even, I don't, I don't understand it. And they're just excited. Oh, look, we caught one. Can we eat it? No, nah, it don't matter. People go down to the Ohio River. You don't eat out of the Ohio River. You don't eat anything that is moving in the Ohio River. And I hope these people that are fishing along the Ohio River, they know that. But they're just out there having a good time. Just watching the pole. Waiting for some. Oh, look, we caught one. No intentions of eating it. See, I don't understand that. But you see, some folks, they like to do that. They like to go shopping, and they, and they like to get, you know, they like to try things on and stuff. Well, God's word is in his, and his good things are likened to precious pearls. It's like jewelry. It's like riches. It's like fine linen. Amen. And man, it's to be an experience to us. We're to go shopping in God. We're to be feasting in God. We're to be partying in God. Glory to God. And I mean, so no matter what's going on in the natural, we're walking around having spiritual experiences and so that we've got a joy that's emanating from us that people in the world don't understand. There's a continual feast going on. There's a continual happiness going on. We're not depressed. We're not move, moody. We're not shaken by the things that are going on in the world. We're not, we're not being manipulated by the, our up and down circumstances. We are having a continual feast. We are partying. We're not here tonight. Let's learn something new and say, bless God. We came here. We learned it. We're done. Let's go to the next thing. I hope Wendy's is still open. <laughs> There's a lot of folks. I mean, they get around the things of God. It's like, okay, are we done yet? And they're just ready to run off and go to, to Denny's. I mean, that's, that's where the thrill is. They're, I mean, they can't wait to get to lunch. They can't wait to get to, they can't wait to get to what's exciting. Friend, there isn't anything more exciting than him. And friend, he is in you. The God of heaven is in you. Get in touch with him. Let's get in touch with him more. 
I said, let's get in touch with him more. Let's experience him more. Let's stir up that life of God that's on the inside of us. Let's stir up that power of God that's on the inside of us. God is at work in you. God is on the inside of you. There are things he wants to do. I mean, you are like a factory that's got all kinds of stuff going on. And you need to start experience what some of those things are that are going on right inside you. That's why we don't have to go somewhere for a good time. All we got to do is just sink down into where we are. And we are in a good time. Now, to do that many times, there's things we got to let go of in the natural in fact, notice what he says in Romans 8, chapter, real quickly here. Romans 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Well, see, that's key right there. This is how we get over to it. It's not some big deal. Uh, notice he goes on. He says, uh, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. So notice that if you're born again, you're already in the door of spiritual things. Uh, Jesus said, unless a man's born again, he will not see the king. Notice, see. He will not see the kingdom of God. Unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of folks say, unless you're born again, you're not going to heaven. He's not, he's not just talking about going to heaven. He's talking about seeing, perceiving, and experiencing the kingdom of heaven. And what is the kingdom of heaven? According to Romans, it's righteousness, peace, and joy. Fullness of joy in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. That's what it is. I mean, he sums it up in three words. Righteousness, peace, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And if you've been born again, bless God, you can see it. You can perceive it. You can experience it. Why? Because you're already in the door of the Spirit. You're already in there. Now all you have to do to experience it in greater depth and to greater degrees is to what? Set your mind on it. Acknowledge it. That's why we need to hear this word tonight. To remind ourselves, to stir ourselves up concerning the gifts that have been given to us. The life of God that's been imparted to the things that are pertaining to the Spirit of God. Stir yourself up. Draw near. How? Set your mind on Him. Set your mind on spiritual things. Look at it again. He says in verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. That's why they live according to the flesh. That's why all they experience is what the five physical senses have to offer. Because they set their mind on it. Christians and non-Christians, they set their mind on the thing of the flesh. And that's what they're going to live according to. That's what they're going to limit themselves to. Don't limit yourself to live according to the flesh by just being carnally or fleshly minded. Get your mind higher. Begin to think. Begin to think on the things that you're thinking on right now. I mean, just get over there. Think on the things of the Spirit. Think on the things of the Spirit. And what's going to happen? You're going to begin to experience and live according to the Spirit. You're going to begin to live according to the Spirit. It's that easy. Why is it so easy for us? Because you're already, according to verse 9, in the Spirit. Why? How do you know that? Because the Spirit of God's in you. Which means you've been born again. You've been born again, and now you can see the kingdom of God. Unless a man's born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. He won't perceive spiritual things. But now that you're born again, you can see it, bless God, because you're already in the doorway of it. Now all you got to do is begin to acknowledge it, think on it, remind yourself you're in the Spirit. You're ready to talk to God now. You're ready to hear from Him now. You're ready to experience Him now. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. 
Well, our God is a real God, and He is a personal God, and He's a God that wants to get involved in every area of our life. He wants us to experience Him. And so I trust that today's teaching is, is helping you that, you know, when we get to praying, when we go seek God, it should be exciting. We should be looking forward to spending time with God. I mean, we shouldn't be looking at it as something we have to do, as some kind of burden or something. I mean, we're talking about experiencing God here. God wants to visit you and manifest in your life. So I trust that from this day forward, as you meditate on these things and keep these things before you, that your life with God is going to take on all new meaning and you're going to begin to have a whole new experience in your relationship with Him. So God bless you. Hey, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on the Living the Life broadcast. Even as it is God's will for all people everywhere to live a life free of sin and condemnation, it is also God's will for all to live life free of sickness and disease. In this series by Stephen Fraser, you will receive the kind of balanced teaching necessary to have victory over sickness. You will learn how healing is a part of redemption in Christ. What is God's will concerning doctors, medicine, and medical science? How to receive healing through simple faith how to take charge of your body, how to cast off the works of darkness, and much, much more. To order this six CD series, go to our website at lofbc.org or call 888-542-2555. Learn how to never be sick another day in your life. Order Victory Over Sickness today. Life of Faith Bible Church. Join us Sunday mornings at 1045 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us online at lofbc.org or call 888-542-2555. For a CD or DVD of today's message, write to us at Life of Faith Bible Church, 14200 Spiegel Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299 or call 1-888-542-2555. You can also visit us online at lofbc.org.